the weather report. Snow started to fall at 7 p.m., but it stopped at around 10.50. Therefore, when the sister witnessed the crime at 11 p.m., the snow had already stopped falling. It is impossible for any tracks made after that time to have been covered up. Not gonna say it. Not gonna say it until I'm sure I won't get whipped if I say it. Are we cool? Okay, good. Order! Order! Very well then. It looks like Ms. Von Karma's claim has been snowed in. It's too soon to be closing this child due to snow. I guess I should have seen that one coming. Mouse Edgeworth. How pathetic of you to rely on the weather, of all things. Answer me this then. When is a weather report ever correct? Oh, uh, no, 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 you got it all wrong. This isn't a forecast, this is actual data. Forecast data, all weather reports have some inaccuracies. It may have still been snowing in the vicinity, well past 11pm. Hmm... It is true. We can all be totally sure, yeah. WHAT?! How did she pull it off? I mean... Even I was surprised at how exact the weather data was like for this. I mean, whoever compiled that data must have been a weather wizard. It had stopped snowing at Hazakura Temple when the murder took place. You need to provide conclusive evidence of this. I've come this far. There's no turning back now. Very well. I too cannot allow any doubt to remain concerning this testimony. Ha! <laughs> they cannot back down, can you? Such a perfectionist, Maz Edgeworth. Very well then. Mr. Edgeworth, where is your evidence that it had already stopped snowing when the victim was killed? Proof that it already stopped when it happened. Hmm. Prove that it stopped when the event happened. Hmm. No. Oh, we... well, actually, let me see. I mean, it's weather. It's the weather data. This is this is what we're questioning. So. Is there anything else around here that can tell us that... 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 It stops snowing? Mm. Hey, hold on a second. Ah, okay. Okay, I see. It indeed stopped at the time of the murder, because if it didn't, then, well, then Elisa's body would have been covered in snow as well. In fact, if I am to think about it, the same can be said about the snowmobile in the tracks photo, like right over here. It wasn't covered in snow. Same thing, same thing can be said about, like, the Shichishito, the staff. It didn't seem like it was covered in snow, so... Um, yeah, I think that, I think that this should suffice. Ultimately, it all comes down to one point. That being, whether or not it was snowing in that courtyard when the victim was stabbed. That's right. But proving that is... Incredibly easy. Like stealing candy from a baby and cutting gumshoe salary. If we want to know whether it was snowing or not, this photo will tell us everything. Of course, I am referring to the photo of the crime scene. As you can see, everything is covered with snow. Just one exception. And that is... The victim herself, Miss Elise Stonham. Why is there no snow on top of her? The answer is simple. 
it had stopped snowing when she was killed. That's why. Huh. In other words, the killer really did go to Eagle River to dispose of the murder weapon. Then in this photograph, there should be two sets of tracks. Ah! Water, water. Just what I Just what are you suggesting, Mouse Edgeworth? I think I'm starting to bleed now. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure myself. But and this is simply what all the facts point to. That night, someone used the snowmobile to leave Hazakura Temple. From the tracks left, it can be understood that they were heading for Dusky Bridge. At that time, it was still snow. Of course it was. Because those tracks were erased by the snow. Then, when this person returned to Hazakura Temple, the snow had stopped. Thus, the return tracks remained. Can I say something? This all sounds a bit fishy to me. What does, sister? There is only one key for the snowmobile. Furthermore, on the night in question, we know that the defendant had it. The key was found in her room after the murder. Which can only mean, that night, Iris used the snowmobile to go to the inner temple. Iris said that she'd never went there. I should probably press on this point some more when I get a chance. The snowmobile cannot cross the suspension bridge, so she must have left it on the Hazakura side of the bridge and crossed on foot. Mm, that sounds right. But what's odd is, when I left Iris and returned to Hazakura Temple, I didn't see anything near Dusky Bridge. You must have just failed to see it, sister. Yeah. Like, maybe it, will, maybe it was invisible. Maybe, but when I made it back to Hazakura Temple... It was there, by the main gate. The snowmobile, I mean. What you took back? Clearly, you jest. I know what I saw. It was covered in snow, too. B but that... It's impossible! Order! Order! Order in the court! What does this all mean? <sighs> so then, what was the snowball you used for? It wasn't taken by the defendant when she went to the inner temple. If it had been, then the witness couldn't possibly have seen it by the gate. Furthermore, it wasn't used by the killer to dispose of the murder weapon. If that was the case, there should be two sets of tracks in this photo. All you know is this. After it stopped snowing, someone used the snowball to return to Hazakura Temple. Hmm. I never thought a simple snowmobile could cause so much trouble. Yeah, to be honest, it's a real pain. Why are you making it hard for us, Snowmobile? I think we've learned all we can from this witness. Yes, yes. I have nothing more to add. I've told you everything. Everything that I know. But then, that still leaves us with the same problem. If only there was someone, a witness who could testify to having seen the Snowmobile. Witness, huh? Was there no one out walking, perhaps near Dusky Bridge on that night? I don't think that's likely. It was cold enough to freeze your ears off. Only an idiot would go out wandering in that. Unless they had something really important to do. Hmm. That's a shame. Hold on. Something is coming to me. Hmm. I do have someone in mind. 
an idiot may well have gone wandering out on the sub at night. Your Honor, actually, there just might be one individual who may be of help to us. Uh, really? You know, someone who might have seen the snowmobile on the night and the murder? I don't know for sure if he saw it or not. But there are two things about him that do come to mind. Which are? First, that he saw something incredible, like another murder. And the second being? This individual that I'm talking about, this individual that I'm thinking of, went wandering outside of that cold night, on that cold night. In other words, he is our kind of idiot. Mr. Edward, who is this idiot you're talking about? Hmm... Of course. It fits the description quite well. Someone who Edgeworth always thinks of in such a tsundere way and will call him an idiot at times. But deep down, he cares a lot about him. It's Nick! Just what is the meaning of this, Mr. Edgeworth? Are you saying that this is the person who saw it who was near Dusky Bridge that night? Uh, I did. <laughs> You're the wandering idiot, Mouse Edgeworth. Oh, oops. My bad. In which case, it clearly was Larry Butts we are talking about, not Nick. Clearly, Edgeworth doesn't give a fuck about Larry Butts. <laughs> Silly me. Call up before you try to take me on again. That's enough. This court sees no reason to further prolong this trial. Nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. This court finds the defendant, Iris of Hazakara Temple. The accused will surrender to the court immediately. Well done. I guess the magic show ended early today. Everyone looks really sad now. But don't worry. I have bunny pictures for everyone to cheer up. Edgeworth looks especially mad, so he will need bunny pictures the most. Man, he is really mad, it seems. He is looking at me all angry right now. He is looking funny at me. He is even phoning his mouth like a dog, like usual. I'm not liking that look whatsoever. To be held pending trial at the higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. This court is adjourned. Alright, now we're back at full health. Mr. Edward, who is this idiot you're talking about? Alright, well, no joking around. And sad to say this, but uh, we have no choice. We are gonna have to go with Larry Butts. This guy must be a product of Jean de Luc de Luc's guide to obnoxious French panty. This is Larry Butts, a disciple of the victim, at least Don. Her student? Interesting. And why was he wandering a boot outside of the night on the murder? Did that... I could tell them all about his designs for Iris, but it may cost us his credibility as a witness. Before I even call him. He is, after all, an artist. He was, perhaps, searching for something in the snowy scenery that would move him. Eh, that is good thinking, Edgeworth. Good thinking. Let's not spoil the fun yet. Espe eventually, the judge himself will see the disaster that is Larry Buzz. Although I cannot guarantee that this is the reason. And so, this unfortunate and reliable looking man what exactly was it that he saw? I intend to extract that from him, right here in this courtroom. Summon this youth as a witness immediately. I have no choice, do I? I believe he is in the gallery for this trial. It will not take long to summon him. Very well. You may have escaped me yesterday, but today I am going to get everything out of you. 
The court will now adjourn for a 20 minute break. Ms. Von Karma, please see to preparing the next witness. Understood, Your Honor. Good. Well then, court is now in recess. February 9, 11.15 a.m. That's the court. Defendant lobby number one. Excuse me, Mr. Edward. I'm not really sure what to say. Iris, we only have 20 minutes. There are two things which I need to ask you before we can convene. Alright. I'll help you any way I can. First, about that night. You really didn't go to the inner temple, correct? The last witness claims to have met and talked with you in training hall. Either you or Sister Bikini is lying. Mr. Edgeworth, it is just as I said yesterday. Until the incident occurred, I was in my own room, in Hazakura Temple. Very well. And the second thing then. That night, the temple snowmobile was used in between the time Sister Bikini returned to the main hall, and when she bore witness to the murder. Sometime between 10.30 and 11 p.m. that night. Are you the one who used the snowmobile? There is only one key for the snowmobile. The only person who could have used it was me. So it was you. But why? What made you go out to Dusky Bridge? So we're back to square one. I mean, what would be the reason, Iris? Uh, sorry, Mr. Edgeworth. Duh. Iris. Hark! The locks have appeared yet again! It's like... It's like during magic shows, when the mage, when the mage is chained inside a water tank, and they have to escape. This one is a sturdy one yet again. Iris, why? I can't. I cannot tell you about that. Yet. Yet? None of her safety is confirmed. Her? The safety of the Acolyte. E you mean Maya? The Acolyte, huh? She must be talking about Maya. Iris, look me in the eye and tell me the truth. Did you kill Ellie Stone? No matter who or what may come, I could never take a life. As I thought, not Psycholox. Very well. It is my job to get to the truth. You will discover this for yourself soon enough. February 9, 11 6 a.m. in the state court. Court number 7. Court will now reconvene. Ms. Von Karma, where is the witness? During the break, a man was detained for suspicious behavior in the gallery. Harry, what did you do this time? Suspicious behavior? He was sketching something. Very intensely. And there I asked what the witness was sketching when he was detained. He drew a terrifying woman, armed with a demonic face and a vicious whip. I cannot say that I know what that reference is. I only presume that he's into. <laughs> anyway, it's time to drag this pathetic excuse for an artist before the court. Larry Stonin, I hope you're ready. Get in here. It would seem that Whip is going to see plenty more use today. <laughs> Your sketch is in contempt of this court. Hey, this is this artistically blazing? You tried to run away from the bailiff who was trying to hand you your subpoena, correct? Look, I'm nothing but a legendary artist. Training out the new Bordens. I'm only down here in the city because I run on a great bait. 
Bob, this is the technical term for the code. Viridian? Larry, this is an art storm, now is it? I know! I graduated junior high, okay? Look, art is all about working in the fields, isn't it? Oh, working in the fields? I presume he wanted to say field work. I mean, I hope. That's it! Thanks, buddy! It's kind of sad that I was able to understand his mangled train work of a sentence. I just happened to stop in here and found a wonderful new model. So see? I've got nothing to do with this draw. At all. I expect all your faces to be red when you realize this mistake. Bright red. Or, to use the technical term, Crimson Lake. Stop your pathetic blabbling and testify like a man! Sheesh. Crowding already unleashed a lot of whips on Larry. She is getting angry. Maybe looking at the next show bunny will help you. I don't need any... God damn it. Refrain from whipping me, please won't cut Cross whipping is as bad as cross checking. Witness, that was all your fault. Testify, now! <laughs> this is too much for me. What you saw? I was at the lodge out in the mountains, looking up the stars that night. I walked to the bridge a number of times, but I didn't see a snowmobile. Snob I didn't see anyone at the bridge that night either. The girl I was waiting for didn't show up. My teacher died on me. I'm all alone now. Aren't I edgy? With us. Please refrain from talking directly to the lawyers during your testimony. I'm just a nobody. Nothing but a small worthless man, aren't I? Why wasn't I asked for my name and occupation? Or anything else? Mr. Edorf, this man seems to have quite a severe inferiority complex. Yeah, we know. He has recently been the cause of numerous incidents. I think it's finally realized for himself. Just how much of a nuisance he has been to other people. Yeah, that's right! I'm behind everything! Every case! Watch out, okay? Just touching me will make you eternally unhappy! Nah! Nonsense! You cannot be that bad! As long as I have my magic with me, nothing will make me unhappy. Even if I touch you right... My god, you're right. I can feel it. You're the source of misfortune and sorrow. How do you still have the energy to wake up in the morning? Well, let us proceed with the cross-examination. With no touching, thank you. We can delve into other details at a later time. I was at the lodge out in the mountains, looking up at the stars at night. Hold it! Whatever is the matter, Mr. Edward? This, this one single statement is so full of contradictions. For a moment there, I thought I was going to collapse. <laughs> I'm telling you. He is a source of unhappiness. And because of that, his contradictions are affecting you too. <laughs> I need to look at the bunny right now. Ah, much better. Mm. So, witness, any idea as to where these contradictions in your testimony lie? Depending on your answer, I may stay my whip. Okay, give me a minute. Well, it was snowing that night, so I couldn't possibly have seen the stars. That rundown shack is hardly a lodge, is it? And even if the stars could be seen, it isn't like I was there to look at them, right? And it was at this moment that we knew we are fucked. See? You can do it if you try. <laughs> <laughs> there is only one issue here. What you saw at Dusky Bridge. I went to the bridge a number of times, but... A number of times. 
How many? Maybe five times? I went once every 20 minutes. Which means you spent almost two hours at Heavenly Hall that night. You bet! Real love is about waiting with your heart in your hands. Love, you say? It was this man's intention to summon the defendant to the small shack. Using this blackmail letter. B blackmail? No, no, no! That was simply a <laughs> You huffy puffy loosey goosey excuse for a whimpering whining wuss of a witness. So, what did you see? I hope for your sake you saw a snowmobile. You huffy puffy loosey goosey excuse for a whimpering whining wuss of a witness. Eh? Keep in mind, if you keep lying to us, you will not be able to see any bunnies or picture of bunnies. You got that? You huffy puffy loosey goosey excuse for a whimpering whining wuss of a witness. Um, well, you see... Being called those names doesn't seem to bother him at all. I didn't see a snowmobile. Hold it. Larry, you really didn't see it. Hey, hey, I need to hit your desk. I can hear you. I didn't see it. I didn't see it's a snowmobile. Larry, say snowmobile for me, please. Snowmobile. If you truly have nothing to hide, then why are you stammering like you just flew over a cuckoo's nest? Almost as if he is a cuckoo himself. Now repeat after me, Larry. I am a liar liar, and my pants are on fire. Sh shut up! But what is this? Uh, I don't know. D -d 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 don't ask me. Since they all need to start from a more obvious contradiction. I'm going to strike the blow that will finally get him to spill the beans. I didn't see anyone at the bridge that night, either. Hold it. You didn't meet anyone? That's right. Because I got nothing to do with this. And I'm here to buy some very to paint, okay? Come on! I expect to see those cribs and late fixes. Now! It appears that simply pressing him isn't going to be enough, it's Edward. Indeed. It seems that he's going to claim to have nothing to do with this to be the, to the end. I don't want this guy to cost us any more time. I need to slice through his selfish contradictions and keep moving things along. Oh boy. Well, like, what am I even supposed to focus on here? I mean, certainly not the first line. I mean, Larry did the job for us. Nothing on the second line. The third line is questionable, and I think it may be the fourth line, because he did see someone at the bridge that night. It was Nick. Larry Butt, I can understand why you might want to throw your old life away. You're plenty pathetic, and it caused all sorts of trouble. I'm sorry. But, having realized just how much of a nuisance you have been, that could be considered a step in the right direction. <laughs> what are you? Trying to console me? It certainly doesn't sound that way to me. However, I cannot forgive you for simply turning away from the incident you create. <laughs> <laughs> you're, 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 you're totally pinning this on me! No, then. Let us talk about the night of the murder. Sister Bikini, after seeing the murder take place, asked Phoenix Wright to report it. Thus, he headed for the public phone by the bridge. There, he happened across a certain nefarious individual. You, Larry Butts. Well, that's right. Me in the flesh. Hmm. Listen carefully, witness. It doesn't matter if you change your name. So long as you remain petty perfect, you will continue to cause these incidents. That reality will not change. But, but what do you mean to do then? Larry, what you need to do is change your inner self. But for now, what you saw that night, testifying truthfully about this one issue, is all I need from you. 
Is he? I... I think... I finally woken up! Larry, the only thing that has woken up is that part of your brain that is causing even more suffering to people around you. I am even afraid to touch you right now. Ah. <sighs> well, I guess I could still be sleeping. But anyway, I'll do it. I'll testify. Oh, I'm not sure this will go as pretty well. Oh, that's okay. But yes. What did you see on another murder? Alright. What you saw? Part 5. Oh, well, I mean part 2. I went to the shack at around 9, so it would have been around 10.30pm. I was lying under my bed when a white flash almost blinded me. And I yelled, Oh my god! It's Santa Claus flashing me! I looked out the window, and this bridge was on fire! There was still some thunder, but I went right away to check it out. That's when I ran into Nick. Hmm... You certainly saw quite a lot, didn't you? So, what happens at the bridge after it caught on fire? It was like me after a three day simp chasing girl. It totally burned out! Like, almost totally gone. I mean, trying to cross the burning remains was what caused Nick to fall. F f what did you say? Oh, don't worry. It's nothing like Fred. He just caught a cold. And you don't have to worry. Like, in case he comes back and he sneezes everywhere, I'll make sure to bring in masks for everyone. God knows what kind of viruses he might spread if he's on the loose. I never know with that man if he should be called lucky or unlucky. No, Mr. Wardrobe. Please commence your cross examination. Alright. And let's get to it. I went to the shack at around 9, so it would have been about 10 30 pm. What did you do out there in the cold for an hour and a half? Well, if you really must know, I was busy being excited. I guess. Hmm. Excited? Dare I even ask? I set the meeting time at 10 p.m., right? But I couldn't wait, and I thought she might come early, too. Well, it appears she didn't come at all in the end. Because they never arranged to meet in the first place, did they? Sh shut up! Don't go picking my fond memories apart! Anyway, I was getting a little worried. I thought maybe Iris had lost her way. So, every 20 minutes or so, I went out to the bridge. But I didn't see anything particularly suspicious. I didn't have anything else to do, so I went back to the shack. So I went back to the shack to wait for her. I was under my bed when a white flesh almost blinded me. Hold it. This light was, of course, lightning. Like, kapow! Like a slip from knowing, honestly. A big bada boom! I don't like that. Uh, it's more like a punch from Miranda. Well, I was a bit startled by the flash of light, so... I looked out the window, and this good bridge was on fire! Hold it. Seeing that, what did you do? What do you think? I was burning up as well! From the fire in my heart. And that is why you went to look at the bridge? Well, to be honest, I, it was freezing cold, so at first I thought, eh, forget it, I'm not doing more covers. But yeah, pretty much stopped snowing, so I don't know, I changed my mind. Hmm. I'm not sure I care for the forget it attitude you had first with us. It was still some fun there, but I went right away to check it out. You said right away. But exactly how long after the strike was that? Hmm. The lightning fell, and then the bridge caught on fire. Maybe around five minutes? I mean, I suddenly thought, God, I'll cheat this out. How far is this small shack you were in from the bridge? Hold on. Um, 
it pretty much stops snowing. It's about a five minute walk. And how did this great bridge look when you got there? I, I had to recover the piece of my childhood. I mean, not even the bonfires kids make during school. I mean, not even the bonfires kids make during school camping trips can compare. Well, should I press him for a little more info? Hmm. Why didn't call anyone? Why did you go to the bridge? All right, well let's let's ask why didn't you call anyone? Larry, let me ask you one thing. What is it, idiot? What's with the serious face? Why didn't he call anyone? Huh? What do you mean? Normally, when faced with a towering inferno, one would try and tell someone. Now there's a public phone right by the skip bridge, correct? Oh, well, of course I thought of doing that. So then, let's hear why you didn't. Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. The uh, reason. My reason. It isn't that I didn't try to tell anyone. I just mm, didn't have time to, okay? I arrived at the bridge, and Nick showed up less than a minute later. Hold it. You claim to have arrived at the bridge at the same time as right? Yeah. I thought I'd better tell someone about this. But then Nick came up yelling about murder. He totally made me forget about the bridge. The fire was pretty much out by them anyway. The fire was pretty much out by then? What's this feeling? I suddenly have a terrible cause of a knees. It was after contacting the police that Phoenix Wright fell from the bridge, correct? Yeah, that's pretty much it. More or less. He told me about the burning bridge yesterday. But there's still something that doesn't quite fit. It looks like... Despite his change of heart, Larry still isn't telling us the whole truth. Um. Yeah, I'm. I'm not buying it. So the lightning hit at 10:45 p.m. From what I remember, and he arrived there pretty early, before like 11 p.m. And yet it was around. I think it was 11.6 p.m. when Nick found out that Elise was dead at the Hazakura Temple. And then he went to the bridge after. So... So how can you say that Nick arrived less than a minute later than he arrived? Larry. But thing is, what evidence should I even use? For this one. Hmm. Maybe the weather data? Since... Since it says that lightning struck at 10.45 p.m. So... It clearly couldn't have been that he saw Nick right then. Because of that. I mean, let's trace back to what Larry said. He saw the lightning, he went to Dusky Bridge, which couldn't have been more than... Like, clearly could have been... It clearly was before 11 p.m. There's no way that it lasted more than 15 minutes for him to get all the way to there. And he says that Nick came right when uh, Larry came there as well. So, yeah, there is there is quite some lying bullshit going on over here, Larry. Objection! Very existence being a contradiction. I'm not sure if you can grasp this or not. What the hey, Edgy? It may be sound like I'm so sort of alien. 